Hello everybody, my name is Marcus. Welcome back to our light campaign playthrough of Automation Game after a brief hiatus. Um, last video we unveiled two new models, the uh, Family Sedan 77 of the Liberator 3 where we moved up market, and the budget hatchback of the uh, first generation Mobilizer which is more squarely targeted at the family budget segment. Now, we had a couple good ideas for what uh, sort of spin-off models to do off of these. One was to do a delivery van, and the other was to do a sort of, like, budget hot hatch. Um, I still want to do the delivery van, but I think this for, for this episode, I'm going to do the uh, I'm gonna do the hot hatch. Because I want to, I think, down the line, make the delivery van a separate model. Um, but the hot hatch is just going to be a variant of the mobilizer. Uh, but I don't quite want to dive into uh, building new large factories, and that will need a large factory just yet after we took on uh, quite a bit of debt, and we're still making a, a pretty healthy loan repayment there, even though our cash balance is strong. I want to I wanna build it up a little bit more. So let's dive into facelifting the mobilizer, since that's going to be the more interesting one. Probably not going to be too much going on on the uh, on the family variant, at least in terms of menu selections. But let's uh, let's clone it and uh, dive into making our our little sports hatch. Now, how much power can we squeeze out of our uh, our little 1.5 liter sprightly motor? I just made a new variant here, cloned off the existing one, named it S83. Haven't made any changes just yet, but let's take a walk through. I think the first thing that we're going to do is up our cam profile. Let's see if we can, I mean, what's our red line going to be? It's a, it looks like it's going to be 6100. So let's max out the red line. That is not very high at all. We can definitely dump more fuel in though. Ooh, and we can switch over to multipoint EFI. Much, much better fuel system. Up the ignition timing, I want to say maybe to about a 75. How do we're doing plenty, yeah, plenty of, uh, of uh, knocking left or not knocking left. We can, we're, we're kind of, uh, we're kind of making an awkward chopped off torque curve here. Maybe what we'll do is, I'd really like to squeeze, that doesn't add too much production units. It also didn't add anything to our... Can we get just one? Yeah, that's worth it. We can rev that just a scotch higher. We'll crank up the compression. I still want it to run on regular fuel, though, because I do think that the, uh, the budget demographics actually notice that. We'll give it a baffled muffler, because it can be a little bit louder, and a bigger exhaust. That gets us up to 76 horsepower, or just shy of. I don't know, that's, that's, that's not half bad. The, car, the car's not going to weigh too much. Let's build it out with that and, uh, and kind of go from there. Give it a quick listen. That's what it's going to sound like. You're, you're just going to have to rev it for everything it's worth. We'll come back. We may do some little minor tweaks to the design. Uh, you know, we'll probably lower it, throw some decent rims on it or something like that. We'll give this one a manual transmission and uh, we'll stick with an open diff. I'm gonna make it have tighter spacing. Take it right down to about a 50 and then can I lower the uh, gearing a little bit? Although it doesn't actually help the score to do that. Yeah, that's that's good and that, that gives it still a little bit of wheel spin. I want that, uh, want, want that acceleration though. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit, uh, that makes a little bit more sense. But I guess we'll do what the demographics like. We'll give it medium tires. Does that actually, yep, that helps it. Okay. And we'll make them uh, just a little wider as well. We'll give it bigger rims. They're still going to be steel. How do these look? Yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good. We're getting somewhere. Bigger wheels means bigger brakes, and we can also afford to do some more aggressive pads. We'll tune it back in so it looks reasonable. Well, I guess that's as far as it goes. We don't need quite so much cooling airflow. I want just a little bit more top speed. Ooh, let's make it a four-seater. Actually, wait a minute. Do they, 
like that? Ooh, what about that? I think a four-seater is the way to go. How about these guys? Do they like a radio? No, they don't like a radio. We'll give it the uh, the good power steering. Or does it need any power steering? Yeah, it does need a little bit of power steering. Let's drop a quality point. No, they, they actually don't like that quality point. And, ooh, yeah, that's a good upgrade. We'll give it the fancy dampers. And this is another area where we can make a big difference. It's just in the suspension tuning. So let's start by stiffening it up. I want to get it maybe like just shy of that drivability bar. Airing towards the side of being a little bit stiffer in the rear. And then we'll dial in some front camber. Get rid of some rear camber. Lower the ride height a little bit. Yeah. And uh, we'll give it just a little stiffer sway bars. I want to get that roll angle. Oop, not quite that stiff. That's better. And this, of course, is going to be an 83 model, but not just any 83 model. The Hot Hatch 83 model. In terms of design, just to uh, make sure we can distinguish it from the other model, and all our customers can as well, what I've done is I've just painted it this sort of mustard yellow color and we've given it some different wheels. That with its little bit lower stance, you can still see the drum brakes in there, um, that with its little bit lower stance, that'll, that'll help us distinguish it. I think that is, uh, that's all of the substantive changes we're going to make. Uh, I really, really like the way this steering graph looks. This is very promising, just like a straight line going right out and then it fades into understeer. Um, but let's give it a quick uh, lap around the test track, just because this is our first car that's even remotely performance oriented. So I'm, I'm kind of curious, and it is remotely relevant, I guess. Okay, it gets around in a 249, I mean actually just over, more like a 250, um, which isn't that great, but compared to all of our other cars, it's fantastic. And it's probably going to be, at its price point, something that's reasonably quick. Remember, this car is coming out in like the late 80s? I don't know. It's still a budget car. One thing I did forget to do was drop the quality points out of our fuel system when switching over to multipoint EFI because it hacks like 10 months off the engineering time and this is going to take long enough as is. That does mean I have to rob it of just one point of compression though. Alright, now I'm going to dive into just facelifting running through the budget hatch one. We'll also upgrade the economy variant of the motor as well. We'll just replace this variant. The E77, this is the E83 of course. And just like the other one, our only major change is going to be switching over to multi-point fuel injection. We're going to leave the rev limit low on this one, and I think the only other thing we're going to do is just get all the compression we can out of it. Cool. So that's pretty good. Our, our sport motor has, what was it, about 20 more horsepower and 10 foot-pounds more uh, torque than the, than the economy model. That's a pretty big difference. Okay. I don't think we need to make any other changes here. We're going to stick, of course, with the advanced automatic. I don't think we need to adjust gearing at all, although maybe we could just make it a tiny bit higher, dial out some of that wheel spin. Okay. Everything looks good here. I don't think we need to make changes. Brakes are okay. I'm just going to give it a little bit more front bias. Aerodynamics, interior, I don't uh, think we have any noteworthy upgrades to make here. Let's target the family budget and uh, do our ritual test of the basic audio. Nope, they still don't want it. We are going to switch over the steering, though. We're going to leave the, leave the quality out this time, and this one obviously is going to stick with the softer suspension tuning, but I do want to dial out just a little bit of the roll angle, so 
We'll go like that, and that brings it to 6.7, which is perfect. Okay, and just for comparison, let's run this one around the test track too and see how it does. Well, the economy model does a 306, so our hot hatch, air quotes, variant, um, does, uh, what was it, uh, a full 20 seconds faster around the track? That's not bad. Okay, I think those are going to be our variants. Let's move right along to our factory tooling. Okay, we're not going to upgrade our factory or anything like that. Yeah, this looks okay. Still have very good efficiency. I am going to increase the automation levels a little bit because we do have some money lying around. And I'm also going to give it slightly higher, higher tooling quality. We can get a little bit better build quality that way, and that's also going to allow us to increase our QA just slightly. All right, now time to just do these sliders. We are going to give it a little bit more of the automation slider. We can crank up the process to about 50, which is, a, I think, a nice spot to park it, sort of a balanced thing. And uh, we will target, I think, uh, 48 months engineering time for this trim. Well, actually, we're going to have to look at the engine. That EFI is probably going to take a while to get out the door, so maybe we target 60 months. I mean, we're selling very profitably now, and 60 months isn't too ridiculous. Yep, we'll crank the funding all the way up too, why not? For the engine factory, we're going to do the same thing. Automation up to 60, tooling up to, up to 55, leaving the QA where it is for that one, because I don't want to chop off too much of the curve. Okay, so our engineering time is pretty reasonable for this, but our sliders are very modest. Let's, uh, let's, let's jam the reliability into it. This is still very good. We can make it a little bit more optimized as well. And uh, this will be a very reliable engine. Hmm, I'm not sure I love the score projection for the hot hatch. Maybe we sell that one at a slight discount. Well, I don't know. It's still a very profitable car. Let's sign it off anyway. We are not going to take out any loan for this. And put it into production. Alright, now what we're going to do is just run through the Liberator sedan. We're not going to introduce any new trims of this. I'm just going to give it a quick run through again because this one's already selling very well. It's maxing out its factory, so um, uh, I don't think we need to expand the trim lineup at all. I am, of course, going to update the engine with multi-point fuel injection and give it the standard treatment that we did the other ones. The upgrade to multi-point EFI has uh, bumped up our horsepower a little bit and a big bump to fuel efficiency as well. The only thing is we did have to widen our exhaust a little bit, but that's okay. Now we'll jump into the trim where we can get a few more significant upgrades, I think. Sticking with our transmission, our wheels, brakes are still looking excellent. Uh, I like the way our interior is looking. Actually, maybe we'll, uh, we'll just pop one more point of quality in. We'll switch over the steering, safety. We're still as current as we can be and the dampers also are going to stay as is. All right, very, very modest upgrades here, um, except for the steering and the, uh, and the fuel system. That's fine. We'll do our factory tooling. Uh, this one's in the medium three factory. I'd kind of forgotten about that, so I am going to make it a little bit more automated so we can produce a few more of them. Wow, our labor quality is excellent in this factory. Well, our production quality, I, sh I should say, but our labor's very experienced too. Engineering, we can uh, increase our automation level, increase our optimization level, and just hammer the reliability slider a little bit. I'm going to target 60 months because even though that's more than we need for this trim, the engine I think is going to is going to take it for the uh, for the multi-point uh, EFI system. We have some points to burn here, so I guess I'll just drop a little bit of funding out of it. We can save a buck. I'm glad I targeted 60 months for the um, trim engineering time because the engine time, just without adjusting any sliders at all, is at 57. So I'm actually going to just max out funding, 
We'll take even a little bit out of process. We'll leave tooling alone and we'll just bump a little bit more reliability into it. We're already running our pressure slider a little bit relaxed and I don't want to touch that. Okay, those look like pretty good scores. We're going to leave our max shifts at an aggressive 2.5 because uh, I think we can sustain it. And we'll complete this design. We're not going to take any loans for it. The combined cost of these projects is well within our means. So, we'll sign her off. We've got um, now about five years to go with looks like about nine or twelve months of offline time for the factory. So we'll set our stock targets. We'll hit the play button and the fast forward button and see how things progress. We are just a couple months away now from our new trims, including the hot hatch, coming online. And um, just want to point out how satisfying it is to, for once, actually nail the stock target. Like, we're going to go seamlessly from new model, or rather from old model to new model, with minimal overlap. So, really happy with that this time. Let's press play, and we'll slow down the game a little bit, and we'll see how the new model fares when it hits the market, or the new trims fair when they hit the market. Whoa. We'll let them sell for a month or two, let them balance out, but things are looking very, very good right now. Wow. Okay, wow, so we're selling a lot of cars, and we're selling them at very strong markups right now. I wanted to even just go and take a look at our Budget Hatch 83, because that's selling at a 100% markup and still scoring over 100 competitiveness um, in its top three, top three demographics, which, okay, I guess that's just because it scores really, really well in Passenger Fleet, but the fact that it's able to do that at a 100% markup is pretty cool. The family sedan is also selling really well, and that's bang on target. That's right where I want it to be. Um, so very, very happy with that, and that's with a healthy markup as well. So I'm going to export a couple of these models to Beam NG Drive, certainly not the least of which is the hot hatch, and uh, I'll see you guys over there, and we'll take them for a test spin. We're back in Beam NG Drive. First with the budget hatch, I thought we would take them for a test drive on the test track today for a change. Um because we're going to be testing the hot hatch. And so well, yeah, I thought we would maybe see how it does out here on the track, which should be its natural habitat. But I kind of wanted to get a benchmark feel on the economy variant first. Dear God, this thing is slow. Oh my God. You know, on the small island map, because that's such a tight road and it's so uneven and it, 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 there's just not that much room to run anyway, the car really didn't feel all that slow. But out here on an actual track, oh god, it's apocalyptic. It does handle, I mean, like, actually decently well. Uh, I think that's just mostly as a result of the fact that it has, like, no power, so it never really gets up to speed where any handling faults can show. That's a philosophy to have. Curious to see how far it'll get up to on this straightaway here. Looks like we might just crack 90? No, we're not going to quite hit it. But hey, it goes flat out through the corner. Didn't have to lift even one bit. Isn't that impressive? After a pretty unexciting lap in uh, the uh, Mobilizer E83, now it's time to take the S83 out, the hot hatch. Let's see. So, of course, we have a real manual transmission on this one. Let's dump the clutch and see what kind of acceleration we get. Well, the extra gearing definitely helps. Uh, handles way flatter, has a lot more grip. It's still not that quick of a car. Um, but it feels a lot sportier. And it definitely is faster than the other one. It's pretty fun to drive, actually really need to find a way to get more power out of this little engine, or, I don't know, maybe, uh, I didn't test it out because I thought it would be too front heavy, but maybe we could drop the big 2.2 into this little car, that would make it move pretty well. Uh, we could probably screw more than 100 horsepower to that, and that would really be a lot for this little car. The other thing that we could do is, uh, slap a turbo on this little 1.5 liter, 
I resisted that this time because it kind of goes against our mantra of simplicity and reliability for this for this car manufacturer. But I don't know, maybe maybe just in the performance model, we could we could stick one in there, and it would uh, it would it would be acceptably reliable. It wouldn't tank us too much. Although we do sell um, for I think it was about. Uh, one of these for every two of the economy models, so we are selling a lot of them. This is not a car that's really about outright speed as much as it is just giving people a fun to drive experience, something that lets them have a little bit of enjoyment in their driving at a price point that's still super, super affordable. Anybody could have this, and anybody can hop behind the wheel and have fun, and they can do it without killing themselves. It's still a very drivable, uh, pretty tame car, very easy to control, and uh, very difficult to bend out of shape, even when you wail on the handbrake a little bit like that. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, let me know what you'd like to see uh, in future episodes coming up. I'll see you next time. Bye.